Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Power Up on this fine day. Good to be with you. Hope that you all are well. On this Wednesday, it is Wednesday, November the 15th. It is opening day of hunting season, uh, and hopefully, uh, if you're watching this out in the woods, uh, I'll try to be quiet. No, I'm not. I can't. Sorry. Uh, just uh, make sure you got those ear buds in or whatever so that uh, uh, the deer can't hear you. Or, or see you, all that kind of stuff there. But anyway, uh, you probably if you're if you're in the woods, if you were in the woods today, you probably watch this a little bit later. Uh, hopefully, you got your deer uh, and all that good stuff there. It is a little bit uh, warm out there today for opening day of hunting season. Hopefully, that doesn't throw uh, off uh, too much the uh, the hunting and the deer getting. But um, hopefully, you're able to get your deer all that good stuff there. We have tonight. We have our children's ministry, The Rock, and it's. Uh, it's opening day night, and so, opening day night, uh, sure. Uh, and uh, our young people are encouraged to wear their uh, hunting stuff, dress like a hunter, all that good stuff there. Where they wear camouflage, uh, the orange, all that good stuff there. And they'd be able to earn some extra extra points for their, or get some extra rock dollars for the store, all that good stuff. So that's going to be tonight at 6 o'clock. And so if you're able to have your young people here, be sure to do so. Church family, I hope to see you here as well. Uh, we'll continue our Bible study at 6 o'clock tonight as well. Uh, all right, uh, here we go. Let's hit that share button really quick. Good to see several of you on already. Hit that share button. We're going to jump right into Revelation chapter number 9 here, okay? Revelation chapter number 9. And I'm going to apologize right now. I do feel a sneeze coming on. Uh, hopefully that is not the case, but it feels like it's coming. So I apologize uh, early because it's probably coming. All right, Revelation chapter 9. Let's do verse number 12. It says, One woe is past, and behold, uh, there come two woes more hereafter. Uh, and we've got these, uh, we looked at the first, not the first, but the first woe, I guess, the fifth trumpet judgment. We are now looking at the sixth trumpet judgment here, uh, beginning in verse number 13. Uh, and we see these increasing uh, in severity. This first, tr or the fifth trumpet judgment, this first woe uh, was, um, man, it was a, a horrible thing. Uh, mankind being tormented for five months. Let's look at verse number 13 now. Verse number 13, the sixth angel sounded. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. We've seen this altar before. Um, I should have highlighted it. Uh, we've seen this altar at in verse uh, chapter number 8 uh, and verse number 3. And another angel came, having stood at the altar, having a golden censer. There was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar. Uh, and upon uh, which was before the throne. And so uh, we've seen a, a reference to this golden altar before. Uh, so this trumpet sounds in verse 14, uh, and it says, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. The four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And so these four angels, uh, angels are loosed and their sole purpose is to slay a third part of men. We've already seen a fourth part of men uh, killed, uh, that they have died, and now we see a third part of the men, of men uh, that are dying. And so uh, we've got, we've got uh, nearly half, half the population on the earth uh, is, now, is now gone. They've, they've died. Uh, and let's continue. Let's look at this and, and everything that happens. Uh, there is a specific time which these four angels are released. Verse number 15, verse number 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 and thousands. So 200 million uh, horsemen here. And I heard the, the number of them. Uh, and uh, this is a great host. Once again, another great host, another great army. This This army. Uh, with the purpose of killing man, uh, the ones that we read about at the fifth trumpet judgment, they were there to torment. Uh, in verse number 17, And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and then that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of the men killed by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. 
for their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents, it had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, okay, now you consider what's going on in these last two trumpet judgments, the, these six trumpet judgments and the seal judgments. You look at how horrible uh, these judgments are, and we look at the response, okay? I like to think that when, if, if persecution were to come, uh, that if, uh, if suffering were to come, uh, I'd like to think that the response of mankind would be to turn towards the Lord. But we note in verse number 20, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these, yet repented not of the works of their hands. Uh, in the midst of this judgment, this suffering, in the midst of the chaos that's going on in the world, mankind continues uh, to not repent. We find uh, in, the, in the seal judgments that man fled to the mountains and the caves and, uh, and uh, wanted the rocks to fall on them so, so they could hide and be hidden from the judgment of God. Not a repentive spirit, but a fleeing from the Lord. And now this, uh, they repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils. We find uh, even uh, during this time that the worship of, of the devil, the, the satanic uh, demon worship uh, is prevalent. It says, and of idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood, they're worshiping false gods as well, making themselves idols to worship, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. And so uh, it's just incredible. During this time of tribulation, this time of judgment, this time of sorrow and suffering, uh, they're worshiping things they're worshiping devils, they're worshiping false idols, they're worshiping everything except the one true God. It's, it's incredible to me. And you know what? That's really been the story of mankind throughout the ages. Been willing to worship everything except the one true God. Been willing to serve everything except for the one true God. And, and it's incredible to me. You think about through history, I think of the, the Israelites, uh, how the miracles, they saw the great miracles, the great sights. Uh, they were led uh, by the Lord. And what do we find them doing often? They're worshiping the golden calf. Uh, they're going to worshiping Baal. They're worshiping false gods. Uh, we're talking God's chosen people. We find the battle uh, today, even in our churches today, in the lives of Christians today, the battle of of really to of being able to remain faithful uh, and remaining faithful to God and what God has called us to do and we're so, we're so easily disillusioned we're so easily drawn away and then we find even here in the tribulation unbelievers uh, f seeking for answers uh, and uh, they begin worshiping everything except the one true God they do not repent of their sin they continue in their sin continue to worship false gods and then you note in verse number 21 Neither repented they. Now, now look at this. Look at the sin that they are involved in. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, referring back to the devil worship and, and demon worship, uh, nor of their fornication. We see their sexual uh, sin as well, nor of their thefts. And so we see during this tribulation period, there is judgment coming from the Lord, but there is a constant rebellious spirit within the heart of mankind that even in the midst of the judgment, they are still involved in sin. They're still involved in the rejection of the one that is bringing the judgment, uh, and yet they, be, they still continue to worship these false gods. Incredible to think about uh, and incredibly sad. Uh, and one of the reasons for their continued involvement in, in sin is because of the, the Holy Spirit being lifted from the world uh, when the believers were taken out. Now, there's, there's believers that or there are people being converted during the tribulation, but in large part, many are rejecting the message of Christ, the message of Jehovah God, uh, and they are accepting 
the message of Antichrist, which we'll read about and learn a little bit more about later on, uh, the message of Antichrist, uh, which is really the, the message that, uh, that Satan would bring himself of leading people away from the Lord. Now, say, what does that mean for us now? As Christians, once again, we are going to be raptured up. Uh, we, will not, we will not be in this tribulation time period. But also that ought to break our hearts as believers, the fact that there are going to be people that, that will uh, be in this tribulation. You think about it. If Christ were to come back today, what people would be involved, would remain left behind in your life and be a part of the tribulation? How many of your friends, how many of your neighbors, how many of your coworkers, how many of your family will be suffering through times like these? And who knows if they'll trust Christ as their Savior. And, and you consider for, for just a moment that we already saw in the first and the seal judgments that a quarter of the population uh, lost their lives. We now see in the trumpet judgments a third of the remaining population has lost their lives as well. And how sad that is uh, to, to see that these have lost their lives. Uh, and uh, there's a good chance that that could be those that we are connected with if they are left behind. Uh, and so what, is that, what does that mean for us? Man, we, we've got to take God's calling upon our life seriously. This is, no time, this is no time for us to take a day off, to take a vacation, man. We've got to be about the Lord's business. We must be faithful in our witness, faithful in our testimony, uh, and take the opportunities that have present, been presented to us to be the witness that God would have us to be. Listen, we are reading of, of a horrific time upon the earth that will happen. And I'm thankful that I won't be here for it, but there will be people that are. And that ought to break our hearts, and that ought to encourage us uh, to live for the Lord in a greater way. Okay? We're going to end with that, uh, ending out chapter number 9 here, uh, and then we'll get into chapter number 10. Uh, chapter number 10, chapter number 11 is really kind of a pause in the midst of what is going on in this judgment, and it's relaying what is, it, it's not, not necessarily a pause, it's a pause in the narrative, if you will, and it's also laying out what is also going on during these during these uh, uh, seal and trumpet judgments, and we'll read about that a little bit uh, tomorrow uh, and on Friday as well. Okay, uh, we're going to say adios for now, uh, and we'll uh, we'll touch base again tomorrow morning. Uh, hopefully, uh, you are doing well, uh, and uh, if you're out in the woods, uh, I shouldn't say good luck to you, but man, I hope a deer walks by that you're able to get. Uh, and uh, excited about excited about the opportunities that uh, those of you who are out in the woods have to get a deer and enjoy that. All right, here we go. Brian and Cindy, good morning to you. Hope you guys have a great day. Uh, Marion, good morning to you. I uh, hope you guys are doing well and getting things packed up for your move. Uh, Ingrid, good morning to you. Uh, love you. Have a great day. Dennis and Geraldine, see you at The Rock tonight as well. Good morning. Uh, our pastor from Pakistan, good morning to you as well. Uh, and uh, God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. I know you're probably more in the evening now, uh, but hope you've had a good day. Uh, Cliff and Karen, good morning to you. Hope you guys have a good day. And Jean, good morning to you. Uh, have a wonderful day. Aaliyah, thank you for listening in as well. Better get that school done. Uh, and Tom, good morning to you. And you're a brave soul for watching and listening. <laughs> in the woods and hopefully you get your deer jody good morning to you as well hope you have an awesome day all right if you haven't shared uh be sure and share our power up we'll touch base again tomorrow morning hopefully we'll see you tonight at six o'clock for church have an awesome day everybody